All right. There's a group who want to own the whole world, all the resources, um, even all the people. They, it's it's uh, it's in their mind that they can own everything. Now I don't know if it's a positive thing. Like we could, t I could take, we could take better care of this planet because we're smarter than all of the the sheep you know so we will own and we will dole out the resources as we think is appropriate because we are smarter than the masses so we are a much smaller group than the masses so we need to keep the masses fighting and confused. We will not get their willing compliance. So we must trick them into complying willingly. Enter screens. If you think about the movie WALL-E, the fitless humans, and they've got these, they don't even have to walk. They're in these chairs all the time. The, the bots come around and give them drinks and food, whatever. And then there's just all this advertisement. Um, if they fall out of their chair, they need to be helped out uh, back up into the chair by bots because their muscles are so atrophied. But they have these easy lives, easy lives. And they're attached to the screens and they, they think they're happy. Okay, and then the movie The Matrix. So it's willing, willingly compliant. And then, um, then you hear from the conspiracy theorist, willingly, willful ignorance. It's willful ignorance. They're not even trying to see what's happening. It's like visiting Oz and just keep believing in Oz instead of seeing the man behind the curtain. It's like, do you want to see the man behind the curtain? Do you want to know how things really work? Do you want to know how things really are? Or do you want to keep believing in Oz, the all-powerful Oz? Okay. So... If you're part of a small group of elitists and you can't make your own planet yet, like the movie Elysium, where Earth is now no boundaries, no, everybody's, everybody's chipped so that the AI robot police can find them and all their activities are monitored, but the, the elites have their own planet. So they're far away from and it's all beautiful and everything's amazing and they feel like they deserve it because they feel like they're above all the people that are fighting for scraps left on earth okay now they still the the elites from elysium still own earth so the humans are only allowed to be where they're allowed to be because they're like um, labor. They're the labor. And they're marked and, oh, given, uh, given what the elites believe that they deserve. But if they're looking down on, okay, if you look, at the, the, like if you look down on somebody, the, the more you look down on someone, the less you think they deserve. Okay, the more that you look down on somebody, the less you think they deserve. The more you look down on somebody, the less you even think of them. Okay, so these people believe that they are like a cut above humanity. They're like, humanity is like sheep. 
It's a workforce. It's a slave. It's a it's a slave labor force. But there's so many of them that they have to be tricked into uh, laboring. So what do we do? We make it easy. We make we make their lives easier as we as we take away certain freedoms and liberties. We just make their lives easier. We give them. Um, a thing that they can uh, turn things on, turn things off. Even though they can walk over to a light switch, they can talk to a little box. You know, we, we, we give them these things to make their life easier so they invite it into their home. They leave it in their, they allow it into their home. And now this helps us monitor more. So lots of monitoring. Uh, yes. So we can monitor them and they can tell this little box that's monitoring them to turn the lights on and off. It's so funny to them. It's so funny to us. It's so funny that how easy it is to get them to put this little surveillance device in their home just because they don't want to turn a light switch on and off. What else will they, what else will they give up for, um, for ease? We keep making their, we just keep making their life easier. Okay. And detach them from nature. Okay. And detach them from other humans. Because. Uh, because. And now I'm seeing like. So. So like slaves on a plantation a long time ago. At night. Eating together and singing. Praying. Dancing. Um, being together gave them a source of inspiration. It gave them something to look forward to. It gave them a fulfillment in their life. Um, so they slaved, you know, they worked during the day and then at night they were left alone. And when they were left alone, when the people were left alone, when the slaves were left alone, they would come together, they would uh, and now I'm seeing, you know, you got that. So now I'm seeing this, um, I think it was the Rwandan genocide, but it's from the movie, The Power of the Heart. I wish I knew her name. Um, she's talking about stay, being hidden, all the Tutsis getting killed. And her brother tried to tell her father that their names were on a list to be killed. And that they had to move, they had to go. I think they only had to go six miles to get out of that uh, that place. And the father's like, no, believe in God. God will save us. God will protect us or whatever. And, and remember the joke, the woman, um, a flood's coming and they're evacuating. And um, so the van comes, come on. She says, no. Uh, the good Lord will save me. You know, God will protect me. God will save me. Uh, and so then the, the floods come. And she has to go from the first floor up to the second floor. And a boat comes. Ma'am, get in the boat. They're looking for people who stayed. Ma'am, get in the boat. Let me take you to safety. No, the good Lord's going to save me. Uh, I believe in God. Whatever. And then the floods get. It's not funny. It's not funny. Then the floods get higher, and now she's on the roof of her house, and the helicopter sends down a ladder. Ma'am, climb the climb the ladder, climb the ropes. Let me bring you to safety. No, the good Lord's going to save me. She drowns, and she gets to heaven, and she says, "God, why didn't you save me?" He says, "What do you mean? I sent you a van, a boat, and a helicopter. What do you want from me?" Okay, so these. Um, uh, the sister brother, the Tootsies, this, that, the kid, the son. So her brother was saying, we got to go. Our names are on a list to be killed. No, God will save us. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Well, they, they were, they, she got out, but they didn't live to see the sunrise. The dad, the brother, the mother, the grand, and her grandparents all killed friends, everybody. 
So she ended up getting hidden with a by a pastor with some other women, and there was a couple kids in there, in this pastor's shower for three months. She was in this shower, scrunched up with all these women. The pastor didn't even tell his children because he didn't want them to be hurt. So he's hiding all these women and kids in a shower in his house for three months. I'm getting emotional, sorry. Um, he gave whatever scraps from dinner, he would, he would bring them after the kids went to bed. He'd save this plate of scraps. And at night, after the kids went to bed, he would bring this plate to, for all these women to share and kids to share. A little plate of scraps. Um, he said, do not flush the toilet unless you hear another toilet flushing. You've got to hear her tell the story. But basically, she said, this is like the only house with two toilets. We were so lucky. We were so lucky. She had this horrible hatred because um, because of all the, you know. And, and people think that their hatred is justified. Now, here's a woman who, her whole family and all of her friends basically are all killed. And she's living in a shower for three months. Uh, and the way to escape her hatred, she tried to do the, she did the Lord's Prayer, but she left out one part. Um, it's forgive, forgiveness. And then she, she, her higher self said, I think you need to put the prayer back together the way it goes. So she did. Um, and then in order to escape the hatred, hatred which hurt her body, she um, thought about, we're in the only house with two toilets. Uh, we get plates of scraps every night. Um, I have these other humans, and they're like touching each other's hair. You know, they're like uh, providing comfort to the others, like this. Uh, she basically one night had a uh, like an epiphany where it was like, do you want to be on the side of love or on the side of hate? And so you see, you know, Martin Luther King and Gandhi. And she said, I want to be on that side. And um, not on the Hitler side. So she ended up forgiving the man in man who killed her family. And um, my brother was put into a coma by some kids and they found him kids. One was like 20 something and they, and two, two were younger, but two must have held him while the, the third person hit him with a brick to take his money or whatever, but they left him for dead. And if it weren't for cell phones, he would be dead. So the hatred that I had for these people was eating me alive because we were in Boston. We stayed right with him the whole time that he was in a coma. And after he got out of the coma, we stayed right with him. And the hatred I had for these people was so intense. And I used to look really young. And then after two weeks of this in Boston, I looked at my face and I had aged 10 years. And it was the hatred that was eating me alive. And I was stunned. I was stunned. And there was a point at which I was like, I'm going to look like I'm 100. <laughs> at this rate, I'm going to look like I'm 100 by the time I'm 30. Or by the time I'm, whatever, 40. Um, and... The hatred gave me a power, though, an invincibility that would make me be able to fight and try to kill them. Like, I, I probably wouldn't have. I don't know. But the hatred gave me this power to fight, this insane, it, it's like such a foreign feeling. And into the ego, it feels good. It feels righteous. It feels true. It feels right. Um. But I ended up, one of the, only one of the kids was in this juvenile place, juvenile hall or something like this, maybe prison. Only one out of three. 
and I love to read books and I read this book and I thought about this hatred and I wrote a letter to the guy in prison and I said I forgive you because you didn't have the childhood that I had. And although I was poor, I was loved. And I had a decent childhood and a mother that loved me. And I know that what you did to my brother You couldn't have had a mother that loved you like mine. Loved me. You just couldn't have had a mother like that. You wouldn't be able to do what you did to my brother. And I said. I forgive you. And I want to just say. You could be laughing at this right now. And that's fine. It doesn't matter to me. But. I have to give, forgive you for me because the hatred that I feel is for you is eating me alive. And I'm one of the lucky ones to see this hatred so strong and what it's doing to me just in the last two months or two weeks or whatever. I don't remember when I did it it's so long ago now. Well, 21 years ago. Because it was right around now. And. My brother was so mad that I forgave this person. I tried to explain to him. You don't know what it was like. And he thinks. It's worse for him because he's the one that suffered. And it is. It is worse for you because you suffered. It is worse for you. But the bad things that happen to me, I don't tell people about. They don't know, you know? So it's like... I don't want to burden people with anything that happened to me, you know? So just because you can't see somebody's scars, it doesn't mean they're not there. <laughs> Just because you don't see somebody's scars, it doesn't mean they're not there. This black woman in this pink sweater telling this story in the, heart, the power of the heart. If you saw her on the street, you'd be like, wow, she's got it all. You know, she's, she's so beautiful. She's smiling. From the inside, she's smiling from the inside. By looking at this woman, you wouldn't say, wow, she looks like someone that spent three months in the shower while everybody she knew was killed outside in the world around her. You would look at her and think she never hated ever. <laughs> but her story of hatred is so powerful. But she got to be face to face with the man who did it in jail. And the jail keeper said, I'm right here. And he hands her this wooden thing. He says, you can hit him. You can take all your frustration out. I'm right here to protect you. And the man comes in. And he's a mess, but he's angry and he's, oh God, the acting is like, it's, it's just perfect. This movie's perfect. The power of the heart, buy it. Everybody buy it. Everybody buy it. Put, put, buy it for everybody you know. We don't want to cry. I know. We don't want to cry. We don't want to be sad. We don't want to be angry. We don't want anything bad to ever happen. 
I know it. We don't want it. But the thing is, unless you feel it, you'll never live a real life. This woman in pink. She's beautiful from the inside out because, because she felt hate, because she lost so much, and because she overcame it all. She's beautiful now, pure. She cleaned herself from the inside out. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. It's, it's your free will choice to just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. But healing is not adding, it's subtracting everything that's not you. Healing is just subtracting. That's all it is. It's subtracting. And hate is a powerful cleanser, you know? Humanity is coming to a point. The earth wants to be purged. She wants to be cleaned. There are children suffering for decades, hundreds of years. You can't see it. You can't see it. Sometimes you find mass graves. It's happening. The way the people who have been controlling and moving us towards an even harder, stronger forms of control. If, if you're afraid to feel your feelings, you're going to be one of the people who are going to think, yeah, smart city's great. Let me move in here. They do everything. It's so easy. It's so easy. I don't have to grow my own food. I don't have to cook my own food. I don't have to cl even clean my own place. It's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. Because they're doing everything for you. But if they're doing everything for you, then they're going to tell you <laughs> when you are no longer uh, welcome to keep using up resources. So we are in a extremely important period of time right now. We have an opportunity to wake up ourselves and allow other people to wake up. Now, the waking up has to happen fast enough that we don't miss this opportunity, but it has to happen slow or gentle enough so that people don't lose their minds. Okay? Now, the people who've been following Renegade Yogi, I've been teaching from a way uh, I've been teaching towards basically controlling your own mind, having your own mind, holding your own mind, enjoying your physical world reality, but not, you're not, I'm not, my body's not me. It's mine. Oh, the woman who forgave the guy in the jail, the guy who owned the prison or the guy who ran the prison was so mad at her because he, as a, an official, he can't beat the prisoner, but he was giving her the opportunity because they killed his wife and his children. And so he's so full of this hatred and it's totally understandable. It's totally understandable. But he wanted her to beat him. He wanted her to beat the prisoner for him. So he was writing an agenda in his mind. He was writing a script. His ego was writing a script for her. Beat him. You have the opportunity. You have the baton. And she forgave. And he's now yelling at her. And it's just like my brother yelling at me for forgiving these, this kid. But the hate was eating me alive. And I wasn't, uh, a willing, I wasn't willing to keep it in my body anymore for anything. Just like her. I mean... It's different. She lost a lot more. My brother's still alive. But but the hate is the same. And I feel so fortunate that I got to feel that much hatred so fast and watch what it did to my body, my my face. Um, because so many people are hating at a lower level. 
and they don't know it's eating them alive more slowly. And they don't know how repulsive they are to me. And even though my old friend reached out to me because she's happy now because she thinks there's a Democrat running things again. So she, she dismissed me, you know, years ago, like other people, they dismissed me or they were mean to me because I refused to hate the person in the White House. Um, they treated me so badly because of their hatred, wanting me to hate. That's what was happening. And I was dancing at one of my friend's concerts. And this, and you know, I'm a healer. Well, so people, people who hated Trump, all the people who hated Trump, they felt very righteous about that hatred. Hating their way to a peaceful world. That's what virtue signaling is. Virtue signaling is basically hatred. Let me show you that I'm hating the right things to be seen as a loving person. It's not a problem solving. It's not solution based. So the, the, like the men, the guys who, the surfers who made the four ocean bracelets, they saw an issue, they saw a problem that they wanted to fix. They focused on the solution. They came up with plastic, you know, they came up with bracelets and cleaning out the ocean. They found a way, they created a solution, a creative solution. They made something that people would want and they created a way to clean the ocean and pay for that by selling bracelets. That's genius to me because they focused on they let their heart provide them the solution to a problem that they saw. They weren't just railing on and on and bitching about the polluted oceans, the pollution oceans. They, it made them sad. It's awful. It's terrible. Yes, it's terrible. But if you just keep beating the drum of how terrible something is, you just keep recreating the terrible. By them focusing on what they want to see, a clean ocean. Okay, they want to see a clean ocean. The heart provides the solution. I guess where, I, like I'm not saying I've gone wrong with this Renegade Yogi thing, where, um, where I need to start bringing life into is my own stories of, I felt hate to a degree that was like, so foreign to me that it was eating me alive and I had to get rid of it. And the way I had to do that was I had to forgive. Forgive for me. And then I got hatred from the person who thinks that I went against them by forgiving. Same with when, when Trump was elected and I have some relatives that are very left. And one screamed in my face. And I'll bet you he doesn't even remember. I'll bet he doesn't even remember. And I never went back. And then they were like, whoa, she's never coming back. What happened? What happened? And I'll bet you anything, they have no idea why. He probably doesn't remember. You know, he, this is my uncle. Like, the eyeballs, I shouldn't see and I shouldn't see that much of anybody's eyeballs, ever. Like, I just shouldn't. Because it's like, the reptilian brain, I thought I was going to get killed. Obviously, I'm not. It's not going to kill me. But it's very scary this was someone who I always saw as this very loving laid back. And he is, but not that moment. So I refuse to let that moment define who that person is to me. He was just whatever. And he was having, okay. Since then, we had, an, uh, we had a talk since then where he said, um, this is happening to your cousin. It's up to us to raise her self-esteem. So I said, okay, well... I'm not doing that. And he looked at me like, what? What do you mean? He didn't say that. He just looked at me. And I said, first of all, it's self-esteem. <clears throat> so I can't raise her self-esteem. Second of all, I don't even work on my own self-esteem. Look at this. Like I'm, there's no hair and makeup team happening right here. I'm like, I'm not going to work on my self-esteem because I'm working towards identification with my spirit rather than my ego. So as important as I, the, 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 the uh, physical world is very important because, and the physical body is extremely important because this body, this or beautiful organic biofeedback machine is the car that my soul drives around in this lifetime. I think Ram Dass calls it the space suit, which I think is great. I just call it the soul's car. So you want to take care of it. I take care of it. Um, 
So I explained, he's like, what does that mean? So I, I said, basically, when I'm with you guys, I pretend to be normal. But there's about, at the time it was 350, now it's over 400 people. But I know I'm, I'm losing people on Renegade Yogi because, um, because I'm starting to become more real. And as I become more real, more authentic, there's people that have been getting some benefit from whatever I was providing, but I wasn't giving uh, my completely authentic self, you know. Anyway, hate's the problem. It really is. And uh, anger's not the problem. Hate is the problem. Anger is, you know, a, a strong feeling that gives you information that you're too close to a person or situation and you just need to push, uh, put a thicker boundary there. So anger is not the issue. And uh, I was getting rid of my anger because anger is a 150 vibration. And Neem Curly Bob said, what are you doing? I said, isn't that low vibration? And he said, there's a gift in there. Take the power out before you get rid of it. Take the power out of the anger. Take the power out. So it's like unwrapping a gift. You keep the present inside. You don't just throw the whole gift away. You open the present that's wrapped. You keep the present and then you throw away the wrapping. So anger is a gift. Anger is a gift. It is. It makes you feel powerful. But hate feels powerful to the ego. And after Trump got elected, the left went nuts. Dem regular old Democrats went nuts. They threw tantrums for four years. One way, one, you know, one way or another, they threw tantrums. Now that supposedly Biden is in, even though he won't get the codes or, you know, they're not giving him the codes right now. Anyway, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. This is just what's happening now. They're complaining. He's not getting everything that he wants. He's not getting the full switch over power. Well, maybe there's a good reason for that. Maybe it has something to do with a laptop. Maybe it has something to do with emails. Maybe it has something to do with all the stuff that people who have been paying attention to the executive orders instead of the news know about. So we are here now collectively. We all contribute to the same reality, which is fine. And I've been very comfortable zoomed out of that reality because it hasn't been my reality. I've just been watching people hurting themselves uh, with their hatred, their righteous hatred, their virtuous fear, virtuous fear. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, why is it easy for people who are afraid to scream at people who aren't wearing a mask? Because fear is a hundred vibration. Anger is 150. So they feel better. People who are afraid feel better when they're angry. It's no mystery there. I just stay away from those people. But you want to tell, you know, a, a biker who's armed <laughs> to put a, put a fucking mask on, Karen? Like, that's not going to happen. You're not going to talk to a biker the way you would talk to me or my children about masks or my friend in Florida. Friends, actually. I feel like I'm sending everyone to Florida now. <laughs> just can't, just don't ruin Florida. Uh, anyway, I guess somebody's got to offset the blue votes. The states they wreck and then they move. And they're like, no, it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with voting. Okay. All right. Then spend your extra day in the blue state that you came from. If you have two houses, spend your extra day and vote in in the in the in the in the state that you 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 know whatever. That's so frustrating. Like people who move to a state like Florida and then look down on the people in Florida who made that state the way it is. If you're gonna look down on them, don't move there. Why are you moving? Oh, well, it's so much better. Yes, because of the people that you're looking down on. Oh my God, it's such common sense, which isn't so common.
So back to the ba looking down on. The elites, the globalists, they want to own the whole planet. They want to own the world. Okay, so they look down on everybody else. They don't care. They don't care. They're looking down. And then the liberals who hate Trump, they were so mad, throwing tantrums for four years, looking down on all the Trump voters, making cracks about Walmart and uh, just nastiness. Okay, and I know there's nastiness on both sides, so I'm not saying that. What I am saying, though, is now, now that Biden's in, to the conservatives, now you know how the other side felt when Trump got in. Use this time while Biden is appearing to be running the show to feel if, if you are, if you're a Trump voter or a conservative, or if you're upset, if you're upset in any way that Biden is in, feel it, feel it deeply, feel it so deeply, how upset that you are, feel your feelings, feel these feelings. If you're upset that, tr that Trump didn't get reelected, you know, um, you know, he won, but he won 75% of the vote. He really did. And that may come out, but if it doesn't, then we are just here now. But use this time while you think Biden is in. Okay? Don't just hope and, I mean, you can hope and pray that Trump gets in, you know, in March or whatever, if it gets reinstated and everything gets fixed and go back to 1776. Must be 730. Um, hold on a second. Up. So you can be in it or not. Okay. All right. So who knows what's going to happen? But for right now, if you if you think you're if you're upset about Biden, then um, feel it, feel it very, very deeply, and understand this is how the people who are throwing tantrums for the last four years, except for Antifa, because they're still throwing tantrums. So the people who are still throwing tantrums now, just take them out of it. But all the Democrats that were upset for the last four years, this, the way you're feeling, feel it deeply. This is how they felt. So feel it, feel it, feel it. And develop compassion, love plus understanding. Now you understand what they were going through and now you can love them because hate is the problem. And we're not gonna get out of this. One side doesn't win. Both sides win or both sides lose. That is the whole thing. Cooperate and graduate from United. Cooperate and graduate. You either all win or you all lose. If you're just in different stages of fighting and you're holding hate and it just keeps flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, hi. No one can win. There's no winning there. Okay? Right? Let me see my cheeks. There's no winning when we go back and forth. This wasn't about a um, presidency. The election process, if if this stands, who's going to vote next time? If you, there's no need to vote. If they can haul in all those ballots, then there's no need to waste your time voting because they're just going to pick the winner they want. Okay, so that's what's happening now. But use the time. Use your feelings. Feel your feelings. Love plus understanding, compassion. It was the only way out. It's the only way out. You gotta get it. You gotta get it. This is the last chance. You gotta get it. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta get it. It's us against them, but it's not the us that you think it is. It's not the Democrats versus the Republicans. All those people are the us. The them is the elite globalists. That's it. And unless you stop the lateral fighting and start the vertical fight, you're gonna keep you're gonna keep doing this. This is what you're doing. You've been doing it the whole time I've been alive for 50 years. You keep fighting against each other. You all look stupid to me. It all looks so stupid. And unless you wake up to the reality that it's the us versus them isn't Democrat versus Republican. And I have to 
forgive the people who don't forgive me for forgiving other people because <laughs> hatred is the problem. All right, talk to you later.